The opening premiere of this series was kind of somewhere in the middle ground. It could have been a lot better, but then again, it could have been a lot worse as well. We've seen that with season eight of Game of Thrones. So the premiere ended up being kind of a mixed bag with some good stuff and some not so good stuff. And while certainly there was potential, there was also a bit of cause for concern with the direction that the writers were going. But one of the things that I did enjoy was the action scene, specifically during the jousting. This was a much higher, faster pace than what we normally see this type of activity in other comparable shows and movies. And even though the armor was cheap molded plastic, the action itself was pretty decent. Though some of the problems with that premiere episode was that it was way too slow and had far too much exposition. So, knowing the strengths and weaknesses, what can we expect going into the second episode? About 40 minutes of people sitting in rooms and talking about their feelings. No, God, please, no, no! So the second episode took out all the stuff that was fun and exciting and instead doubled down on all the stuff that was bland and boring. Obviously, you can't have big action scenes in every single episode, but when you can't have those, please replace them with something other than people just sitting in a room and talking about their feelings because it makes everything all that more slow and boring. Which once again leads into my rating system. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bring this up every single video, but since I have a lot of new subscribers, I think it's probably necessary at least a second time. I use a very simple rating system. Something is either good or it's bad, which means that it's either worth watching or it's not. And from what I've seen, this series has way too many problems. Besides all of the woke garbage, it's just plain boring. If I wasn't making a video about this series, I wouldn't even bother watching it. And for that reason, I can't possibly recommend it to others, which is why it gets the rating that it does. House of the Dragon is bad, episode two. The first thing to mention is the intro. I think it's pretty good. It's similar enough to the Game of Thrones, but different enough to be its own thing. The idea of having a literal river of blood that's flowing as the bloodline to the different houses and showing the lineage of the Targaryens, that's really good. I like that. What I didn't really like was the music that they used. It was the Game of Thrones music, and don't get me wrong, that's really good and I like it, but that was for that series. They probably should have had something new for this series instead of just relying on nostalgia. This episode jumps about six months after the first one, and this seems like something they're going to continue to do with each of the episodes, at least until they get to the second half of the season. We begin with another small council meeting, and I have to say, this has got to be the most cost-effective set created for the entire series with the amount of times that they used it. The council is discussing that one of the Kingsguard has died and must now be replaced. There's a bunch of suitable replacements, and one of them will be chosen later in the episode. However, the meeting is interrupted when someone bursts through the door, and it turns out to be that Bob Marley wannabe motherfucker. And if you know that song reference, put it in the comment section for some extra bonus internet points. They're not worth anything. You just look cool. And once again, I have to point out how utterly ridiculous this guy looks while wearing what is almost certainly an actual mop on his head. You are a very strange looking individual, if you don't mind me saying so, Private. And the thing that makes it stand out and look even more absurd is the fact that the mop hair wig is almost pure white, and yet for some reason this guy's beard is all black with a little bit of gray from age. Because last time I checked, the hair on a guy's head is going to be the same color as the hair in his beard. Now, in fairness, the show does kind of mess this up a little bit with the Targaryen characters, particularly with eyebrows. But on Bob here, it's so much worse because the black hair in his beard is in such obvious contrast to the white hair that he's supposed to have. Did the show creators spend all of their money on mops and they couldn't afford a little bit of hair dye? Regardless, Bob says that a bunch of ships have been destroyed in the Stepstones. This was done by a pirate known as the Crab Feeder. However, it's a bigger problem than just dealing with the pirate because he is essentially being supported by several of the free cities, and going after him would almost certainly start a war with those free cities. King Viserys says that he wants to avoid this at all costs, which is why he already sent some envoys to go and speak with the free cities. However, Bob doesn't think this is enough, and that there should be some sort of show of force in the form of a counterattack. 
Rainy then chimes in, saying that she could ride her dragon to the Step Zones to remind the Free Cities that the Targaryens have dragons, and this would work as a show of force, but it wouldn't require any of the violence. Bob supports this, but the other members of the Small Council do not, including the King. And the way that it's shown in the episode is that the Small Council and the King are dismissing her idea because she's a woman! And this, of course, is fucking nonsense. The reason why she's not taking seriously has nothing to do with her being a woman and everything to do with the fact that she is still a child and children do not give war advice. You don't approve. Well, too bad. But even ignoring that, her idea is still terrible. Remember, the kingdom is currently going through yet another problem with royal succession, putting the heir to the throne in a dangerous position by sending her out to what is effectively an active combat zone to kind of threaten the enemy is not a very smart thing to do. Perhaps another dragon rider could have done this, but other than Damon, I don't actually know how many dragon riders the show plans on including, because from what we've seen so far, it might only be Rainy and Damon who are the current dragon riders, and neither of them would be a good choice to send out there for different reasons. But instead, the show wants to pretend that she's being ignored because she's a woman. Anyways, Hightower then suggests that Princess's talents could be used elsewhere, so Viserys tells Lord Commander of the Kingsguard to bring Rainy to see about the new Kingsguard posting. Since this is going to be a knight that is specifically assigned to Rainy, he thinks that it's a good idea for her to choose him. The next scene has Rainy interviewing some fairly lackluster knights, with Hightower arriving shortly after. She asks who among the knights has seen real combat, and only one of them steps forward, Sir Kristen Cole. He fought for over a year, but the problem is that he's not from a noble enough house. He is the son of a steward, so he's not completely lowborn scum, but his appointment to the Kingsguard won't also bring along with it any additional favors. And this sort of thing is important because titles, rewards, and positions are often given out to ensure loyalty to the throne. Show me the money! Being the king's hand, Hightower is well aware of this sort of thing and even points it out. He suggests that Rainy not make such a quick decision because some of the other knights are representing important houses that need to stay tied to the king. However, Rainy points out she wants a knight who's known real combat in order to best defend the king. Both of these arguments make fair points, but the show, of course, uses this as an excuse for Rainy to express a girl power moment when she talks down to Hightower and puts him in his place. Because fucking of course. This is how insecure heterosexual males used to bond. Moving on, it goes to a scene of Viserys and Allison who have been spending more time together, and of course, they spend the entire time essentially talking about their feelings. During this, however, the king accidentally breaks a small statue of a dragon, which will come up later. Then we see the next scene where it's Rainy and Allison, who again, are talking about their feelings. No! Oh, please, God, no! Continuing, now it moves over to a secret meeting between Viserys, Bob, and Bob's wife. And for once, they're not talking about feelings! Yes! Yes! Instead, they talk about how the kingdom is under threat and there needs to be unity and that the issue of succession is still a very tenuous one. So Bob suggests that the king marry his daughter so that the Targaryen and the Valerian bloodlines will be combined and it should put an end to any sort of hostility that may have happened from the Great Council. There are a couple of problems with this. First, Bob's daughter is only 12, and that sort of thing is not unheard of in the world of Game of Thrones, but even still, the king really just doesn't want to take another wife anyways. But after that, there's a scene of Viserys eating dinner with Rainy, and can you guess what they're talking about? Ding, 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 that's right! It's their feelings again! A few days later, the king goes for a walk through the garden with Bob's daughter in order to get a little more acquainted with her, and somehow, they manage to make her wig look even more ridiculous than Bob's. Look at it! This thing looks like it was found in some 18th century garbage dump. It is not even remotely close to being realistic hair. I am insulted on your behalf. There's a little bit of small talk between the two, but it's pretty clear that Viserys is not interested. Then it cuts to Rainy and Bob's wife as they're watching the king from above as he's walking through the garden. Bob's wife begins to lecture Rainy on what's going to happen in the future. She says that the king is going to remarry and have more children, and when one of those children is male, 
the lords of the realm will want him to take the throne instead of Rainy. She says this in a very disrespectful way, not just directed at Rainy, but also directed at that future unborn child. And she refers to him just as the boy with the full intent of insulting him. Now, let me remind you at this point that Bob's wife is setting up Viserys with her own daughter. Therefore, that boy is her grandson. She is belittling and insulting her own grandson because she's still angry at getting passed over during the Great Council. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. I find this to be a little funny because it was exactly this sort of behavior and personality which made her such an unlikable bitch and why she got passed over for the throne in the first place. Rainey replies that the Lords of the Realm did not deny a woman the right to rule the kingdom. They denied a very specific person, namely Bob's wife, What's-Her-Face. It doesn't matter what her name was! And those same Lords of the Realm have now sworn fealty to Rainey. After this, Bob's wife tries to insult Rainey by saying that even though she's been named heir to the throne, she is still just a cupbearer for the small council. And this, of course, proves that Bob's wife is much dumber than Sam Tarly. Either that or the writers on this show didn't bother to pay attention to the Game of Thrones books or the series. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Let's take a look back, shall we? When Jon Snow was picked to be steward for Lord Mormont, he also complained about being a cupbearer and having to change sheets and fetch food and do other menial tasks and all that sort of stuff. Do you take me for a servant? But Sam Tarly correctly pointed out it meant that Jon would be on the inside, that he would be privy to all of the information that the Lord Commander was a part of, that he was being picked so he could be molded to be the next Lord Commander. Sam further explains that his own father did the same thing with him in order to prepare Sam to take over the role as Lord. Right now, Rainey is still a child, so having her actually sit on the small council doesn't make any sense. But making Rainey the cupbearer means that even though she isn't directly participating, she will still be able to listen and learn about everything that's happening in the small council. This is actually something that happens with many, many of the lords and ladies throughout all of the Seven Kingdoms. This is an extremely common practice for them to prepare their heir to take over the role. So Bob's wife is proving just how little she actually understands, which I might point out seems to validate the decision of the lords at the Great Council to not pick her. You're just a woman with a small brain. Also, one other thing to point out, being a cupbearer is considered to be a position of high honor, and it's not actually something that's looked down upon in the Seven Kingdoms, especially when you're cupbearer to the king. You would think that the writers would know this since they are, in fact, you know, writing a story about the Seven Kingdoms. Supposedly, George R. R. Martin is more involved in this series than he was with the Game of Thrones, so either that's not true or George just stopped caring. Continuing, there's another scene with Viserys and Alicent, and she gives him a gift, and it turns out to be that broken dragon statue that has now been repaired. And while this may seem like a very small thing, normally a king would be given all sorts of fabulous riches in the form of gold and gemstones, things that are very expensive but hold very little value to a person sentimentally. This gift, however, is much more touching and personal for Viserys. It's clear that he's developing feelings for Alicent. However, the two are rudely interrupted by none other than Alicent's father, Lord Hightower. He says there's urgent news and the king must come to the small council meeting immediately. And again, I have to say, this small council chamber definitely paying for itself at this point. We learn that Damon has stolen one of the dragon eggs, and this is because he plans to take a second wife and that she is with child, and it's Targaryen custom to put a dragon egg in the crib with the baby. Where are my dragons? At first, Viserys doesn't really care until it's mentioned that the specific egg that was taken was the one that had been chosen for his recently deceased son, and now filled with rage, he wants to go to Dragonstone himself in order to take it back, but the small council convinces him that Hightower should go instead. Hightower and a retinue arrive at Dragonstone, where Damon is unwilling to give up the egg. I offer you a nice egg in this trying time. 
He and Hightower argue back and forth, swords are drawn, and bloodshed seems inevitable. However, Damon has another card to play and summons his dragon, which causes Hightower and his men to quickly sheathe their swords. It seems like Damon has won, but moments later, a second dragon appears in the sky, ridden by Rainy. When she lands, Hightower is, of course, very concerned about her safety, and once again, she gets another girl power moment where she talks down to him and lectures him. Because fucking of course. <sighs> <laughs> then Rainy and Damien talk for a little bit. Rainy calls his bluff about having a child, as it turns out his new wife is not pregnant yet, and they're not even married yet. Rainy then challenges Damon and says that if he wants to be the sole heir, that all he has to do is kill her. And of course, he's not going to do this, because despite the supposed hostility between Damon and Rainy, they actually care about each other quite a bit, in a, shall we say, very Targaryen way. Seduce me! Finally, Damon just throws the egg at Rainy and he walks away. So, of course, Hightower and all the men of his retinue have failed, and it was the woman who was able to not only get the egg, but to do so without any bloodshed or violence at all. Because fucking of course. But don't worry, it gets worse. Since apparently women lecturing men doesn't happen enough in this series, this time we get a scene of Shy 2.0 who spends the next several minutes talking down and lecturing Damon. I'm sorry. What? Just to be clear, this is a lowborn whore who is talking down to and lecturing a dragon riding Damon Targaryen. Are you fucking serious? Certainly there's an argument to be made for why Rainy can get away with this sort of thing. She's a princess, she's heir to the throne, she has a dragon, and she has a lot of power. Now, of course, none of those things are why the writers are making Rainy talk down to men. That's another thing, of course. But it doesn't make any sense whatso fucking ever for a lowborn whore to be talking down and lecturing Damon fucking Targaryen. How embarrassing. Back in the Red Keep, Viserys is furious with Rainy, purposely putting herself in danger, which was the exact thing that he said not to do in regard to confronting the pirates, but Rainy being the girl boss strong woman that she is, she brags about how she was able to complete the mission and none of the dumb men were able to. And of course the king just goes along with it. And I hope you're ready for it because the rest of the scene is these two characters talking about their feelings. No, no! In fairness, the specific topic they discuss is actually relevant to the show and that is Viserys needing to remarry. He tells Rainy that he loved her mother and he really doesn't want to remarry, but Rainy seems to understand that it's necessary for the king to do that sort of thing because he needs to serve the realm, and in order to do that, he needs to have a family, he needs to have heirs, and this is part of being the king, and it's a necessary thing that needs to happen. Remember that, because in about a minute, Rainy's gonna throw all that shit out the window. So the next day, Viserys has another small council meeting where he declares that he's going to marry a woman, but in a not-so-surprising twist, he announces that it's going to be Alison Hightower. Bob Marley gets very angry about this and storms out of the room. And by the way, if it wasn't glaringly obvious already, there absolutely is some woke weirdo agenda nonsense going on with this scene, where the king chooses the white girl over the black girl. Because if you don't think that the writers intended for that to have a little bit of a racial subtext going on, then you might be interested in a bridge that I have to sell. Do you get me? Also, Rainy is visibly upset. Even though she agreed that the king must remarry about a minute ago, she's quite angry that she was never told about what's been happening between the king and Allison. And in fairness to her, yeah, she did agree that he needs to be remarried, but it's also her best friend and her dad, so I can kind of understand that she would be mad not being told any of that. Sometime later, Bob is meeting with Damon, and Bob is talking about how amazingly awesome he is, and they plan to work together to not only deal with the pirates, but it seems that they're going to try to make a move on the Iron Throne itself as well. Now, there is one thing that Bob says I think is particularly funny, when talking with Damon, he says, Our worth is not given. It must be made. You serious? Seeing him say that, I can't help but find it a little bit funny because the actor himself 
is the perfect example of the exact opposite of that. The only reason why he has the role of this character is because it was given to him in the form of race quota tokenism. To see him talking about how things must be earned is quite ironic. There's a little bit of foreshadowing about the upcoming battles with the pirates, and that's about it. I find it very difficult to be interested in this series, ignoring all of the woke trash. It's just so very boring. We're forced to sit through scene after scene after scene of people just sitting down and talking about their feelings. I understand that you can't have action all the time, but come on, replace it with something better than that. So far, not a whole lot has been happening, but the next episode does look like it will promise some action, so we'll have to see how that goes. But thankfully, that's the end of episode two. I'm taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop off with the new rock, electronic, blow the sonic proof up. I'm too honest when I take a few shots. They're too toxic, need to take the new song.